In January, I made a video highlighting native plants that are evergreen or semi-evergreen. I felt guilty making this video because there are so many native plants that provide great winter interest without having green leaves. In this video, I redeem myself by focusing on 12 deciduous native plants that provide winter interest. One note to share before I jump in is that all these pictures are taken in Southeast Pennsylvania, where I live. I'm going to start with these pictures of red and yellow twig dogwood, which both provide great winter interest. I combine these because the only picture of yellow twig dogwood I was able to find was this picture. Therefore, the remaining pictures are all of red twig dogwoods. The first picture is a red twig dogwood covered in snow. The red twigs stand out against the snow and against the siding of the house. Next, I want to share that dogwoods are host plants for dogwood sawflies, which can quickly defoliate dogwoods. Some may choose to stay away from dogwoods because of the sawflies, but this is not a deterrent to me. When I see sawflies, I gather a bunch on a leaf and move it to the bird feeder so birds help to keep them in check. The last picture is a picture of the white berries from a red twig dogwood to highlight there are multiple seasons of interest when you use red or yellow twig dogwood. Overall, a great shrub that I would recommend for any landscape. If you are enjoying this video, please consider subscribing. Second on the list are winterberry shrubs, which are often paired with red twig dogwoods for a pop of red color, as you see in this photo from Longwood Gardens. Let's take a closer look at the berries, which are everywhere. It's amazing how many berries you get from one shrub, which stands out for great curb appeal. In this video, during a recent snowstorm, you can see birds rely on the berries for food in the winter. I recently posted a design video that was centered around a winterberry shrub. If you are considering adding a winterberry and want some design ideas, then check out this video after you finish with this one. I'll wrap up winterberry by sharing this video of a bumblebee collecting pollen. I like watching insects work and I want to highlight the flowers are very small as you can see when compared to the bumblebee. Next, I have four pictures of Virginia sweet spire. The first picture is along a path. To the left are sweet pepper bushes, which I'll cover next, and to the right are Virginia sweet spire shrubs. You can see in mass, these both look great as border plants. In the second picture, I keep with a winter theme with this picture after an ice storm. The ice really makes everything glow and brings out the color, making for great winter interest. When in bloom, Virginia sweet spire is frequented by pollinators like this bumblebee. My goal is to highlight the flowers, but this bumblebee really steals the spotlight in this picture. Now the fourth and final picture of sweet spire is an expanded view in full bloom. This gives you an idea of just how many flowers you get with Virginia sweet spire. Next, I have two pictures of sweet pepper bush. As I just covered, the sweet pepper bush is to the left and the Virginia sweet spire is to the right. Both make an excellent border to the path. Here is a picture in full bloom with a red admiral butterfly visiting. I love the dark foliage from the sweet pepper bush shrub. Overall, this is a great shrub to consider for your native landscape for multiple seasons of interest. Next, I have three pictures of Coreopsis palustris summer sunshine, which grows to three to four feet tall and wide. This island consists of three Coreopsis plants and two birdhouses and nothing else. This works because Coreopsis provides multiple seasons of interest. In the winter, this perennial keeps its structure and the brown color stands out from the lawn. In the next picture, snow is covering everything and the Coreopsis continues to hold its structure and stand tall. I want to highlight that this species of Coreopsis is a fall bloomer, not a summer bloomer like other Coreopsis varieties. In the fall, it has loads of yellow flowers that really pop even when viewing from a distance. Next, I have four pictures of cinnamon ferns. I'm starting with this picture of a cinnamon fern sticking out of the snow, which adds winter interest. However, full disclosure, the fronds surrounding this are all laying down on the ground. So 
Cinnamon ferns provide some winter interest, but not from a distance. In the spring, you can see new fronds slowly unwinding, which is fun to observe over several days. If you have multiple cinnamon ferns, then you end up with an area like this, which has a different texture than the rest of the shrubs and perennials in the landscape in the spring and summer. Next, I have three pictures of hydrangeas. Oftentimes in traditional landscapes, hydrangeas are deadheaded to remove the seed heads in the fall, which I don't agree with. I recommend leaving the seed heads, which will remain through the winter. From a distance, the seed heads appear to be floating. In the second picture, you can see snow collecting on the seed heads, which helps to provide an extra kick of winter interest. The last picture is of the flower in bloom, which is long lasting, making this a standout in multiple seasons and a great addition to any garden. Next, I have two pictures of Eastern Redbud, which is the only tree I included. In the winter, you can see the seed pods hanging, which is unique and different from other trees. These seed pods catch the eye and therefore provide winter interest. When in bloom, Eastern red buds are amazing standouts with pink flowers that are easily seen from a great distance. The amazing bloom along with the winter interest makes it worth the extra time to clean up the seed pods in the spring, including the volunteers that follow. If you have a red bud, please leave a comment to share how you feel about the seed pods and maintenance for red buds. Next, I have three pictures of viburnums. The first picture is of the fruit, which is an important food source for birds in the winter. The darker, almost black color of the fruit is not as showy as the red winter berries, but they still provide winter interest as birds are attracted to the berries. In the spring, the flowers are very showy despite their small size because they are clustered together. There are vi viburnum varieties that get large which is a great way to cover the ground. In this last photo, you can see just how many berries you get from a mature viburnum. In the fall, the berries are more noticeable against the green leaves. If you're enjoying this video, please click like as I move to turtle heads. I have two pictures of turtle heads and a video of this great native plant for the middle landscape. You can see turtle heads hold up very well to winter conditions including snow, which will not cause the stems to collapse. In bloom, turtle heads have a unique flower, which is what gives this plant its name. Turtle heads are capable of growing in water, so I added some to my pond, where I captured this video of a bumblebee climbing inside one of the flowers. I also have turtle heads growing outside the pond in soil that is very dry. All the turtle heads are thriving, so this is a versatile perennial that is adaptable to a variety of conditions, which makes this a great perennial to add to any garden. If you know someone looking for great plants to add to their garden, be sure to share this video. Next, I have three pictures of pink moly grass to share with you. The first is in the winter where this grass keeps its structure and remains upright with a white color. Therefore, as I go through the pictures, You'll notice the color is either green in the summer, pink with flowers in the fall, or white in the winter. First, I'll share a picture of pink moly grass covered in snow. It's not a standout in the snow, but it's enough that you can see something is here. When compared to traditional boring landscapes that are all grass and mulch, then this is the something your eye wants to find after a snow. If you want to see examples of native landscape designs featuring pink moly grass, then take a look at our landscape design playlist where the first two videos feature pink moly grass. Lastly, before I move on, I want to share a picture of pink moly grass in full bloom with every part turning pink, which is a standout in the garden. Next, I have two pictures of little blue stem grass. I wish I had a better picture of little blue stem in the winter, but I made some changes to this area in the fall, so my blue stem got cut back. Normally, I would not cut this until late in the spring, but here we are. In this picture, I want to highlight the color of the blue stem, which turns a dark brown in the winter. In the summer, little blue stem is true to its common name, 
with a bluish color. I'll share that bluestem is known for its deep root system in areas where you want to control erosion. Or if you're looking for a drought tolerant native plant, then this is a great option with multiple seasons of interest. This concludes the 12 deciduous native plants for winter interest. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing and give me a like if you enjoyed the video. Otherwise, check out our playlist of other native plant videos and designs.